Of all the categories of food, fat seems to get the most airwaves and the most flack. Fat is in almost all the foods we eat, even vegetables. And we've been eating fat since the dawn of human time. But is fat really bad for us? And what is fat anyway? All fats are made up of two parts. A sweet tasting sugar alcohol backbone, called a glycerol, and three fatty acids, which are long carbon chains. Fats are also called triglycerides, because there are three fatty acids attached to one glycerol. There are two kinds of triglycerides, that is, two kinds of fat, saturated fat and unsaturated fat. A carbon atom in the long fatty acid chain must form four bonds. One bond, if the carbon is on the end of the fatty acid chain, or two bonds, are used to attach that carbon to another carbon. If hydrogens occupy all the rest of the two or three available bonds, then the fat molecule has all the hydrogens it can possibly hold. The fat is saturated with hydrogens. This type of fat is called saturated fat. Alternatively, instead of bonding to a hydrogen, one of the bonds on the carbon can be used to strengthen an existing bond to another carbon by forming a double bond. If there are any double bonds at all, then the molecule is not holding as many hydrogens as it could be holding, and the fat is called unsaturated fat. Because the carbon is now bonded to three rather than four atoms, the geometry of the molecule also changes. These double bonds are straight, unlike the single bonds, and they form kinks in the chain. Because of these kinks, an unsaturated fat molecule can't pack itself very tightly and neatly with other unsaturated fat molecules, and unsaturated fat is liquid at room temperature. Unsaturated fat makes up vegetable oils like olive oil or corn oil. On the other hand, saturated fat, which doesn't have those kinks, can pack itself very neatly, and saturated fat gets to be solid at room temperature, like butter, which is made from milk, or like the little squishy fat chunks in a steak, or like other animal fats. Unlike in a single bond, the carbons in a double bond can't rotate relative to each other. The result is that there are two different ways to orient the rest of the chain on either side of the bond. The chains can extend out from the bond in the same direction, a cis orientation, or the chains can extend out from the bond in different directions, a trans orientation. In Latin, the word cis means on the same side, and the word trans means on the other side. The double bonds formed in unsaturated fat in nature are almost exclusively cis bonds. Trans fats, which are unsaturated fats containing trans double bonds, are almost exclusively made by us humans, in labs and in food factories. Unlike the cis unsaturated fats found in plant oils, the trans unsaturated fats that we manufacture can stack and fit together just like saturated fat. Even though they're unsaturated, trans fats are solid at room temperature, just like saturated fats. Trans fats are contained in partially hydrogenated oils, unsaturated fats in which some but not all double bonds have been artificially replaced by hydrogens, and most remaining cis double bonds are twisted into trans double bonds. The French chemist Paul Sabatier won the Nobel Prize for his work on the process. These artificially produced trans fats are found in margarine, Crisco, and partially hydrogenated vegetable oil. There is also natural trans fat in the meat and milk of cows, sheep, and other ruminants, mammals who more thoroughly mine plants for nutrients by first digesting the plants in a specialized stomach with the help of bacteria, regurgitating them, and then starting over and digesting them in what looks a lot more like our digestive systems. So all these different types of fat, are they bad for us? We know that fat is used by our bodies to store energy. In addition, we also need fat to digest and use the fat-soluble vitamins A, D, K, and E to maintain healthy skin and hair and to store and remove toxic substances far away from vital organs. Trans fat is the one fat for which there is a general consensus that it is indeed bad. Trans fat lowers HDL cholesterol, the good cholesterol, and raises LDL cholesterol, the bad cholesterol. On the other hand, unsaturated fat, the liquid fat with only cis double bonds, is actually considered good. Monounsaturated fats, which have one double bond and are found in olive oil and avocados, and polyunsaturated fats, which have multiple double bonds and are found in sunflower and corn oils, salmon and walnuts, actually lower cholesterol and your risk of heart disease. What about saturated fat? the solid fat with no double bonds. There are more than two dozen kinds of saturated fat, and each of them affects the body in its own way. Lauric acid, found in coconut oil, is actually thought to be beneficial, like olive oil. 
Steric acid, found in chocolate, doesn't affect blood cholesterol at all. Palmitic acid, found in palm oil, butter, and eggs, and muristic acid, found in cheese, milk, butter, and beef, are the sources of most of the problems caused by saturated fat. These fats increase the amount of bad LDL cholesterol. However, they also increase the size of the cholesterol molecules, which might not be as bad for us as increasing the number of them. So these fats may or may not be as bad as we think they are. In addition, palmitic acid and muristic acid also increase the good HDL cholesterol, which may or may not balance out the increased bad cholesterol. Until recently, it has been taken for granted that saturated fat leads to clogged arteries, and that clogged arteries lead to heart attack and stroke. However, new long-term studies have found that people who eat a lot of saturated fat have the same risk of heart disease as people who eat only a little saturated fat. And as we saw earlier, some foods with high saturated fat content might actually lower stroke and type 2 diabetes risk. Even when we look at fat in general, it has been found that the proportion of a person's calories that comes from fat has no effect on risk of heart disease, and there is growing evidence that it also has no effect on obesity. Still, all of this research is controversial. Nutrition is a very complicated topic, and our understanding of the field is constantly changing and improving. So what is the problem with fat? Over the past three decades, we've had a rush to eat less fat, especially less saturated fat. As fat consumption has gone down, Consumption of refined carbohydrates, which raise our risk of heart disease and type 2 diabetes even more than saturated fat does, has gone up. Even if fat, or just some kinds of fat, is bad for us, the negative effects of fat might be getting buried in the larger negative effects of sugar and refined carbs. Focusing on the fat in our diets can also hide other problems and lead us to well-intentioned but bad decisions. Processed meats, for example, like bacon, bologna, and sausages, usually have equal or lower saturated fat compared to unprocessed meat, like steak. However, processed meat is associated with a much higher risk of type 2 diabetes and heart disease. The risk is two or three times as high, possibly because processed meat have more sodium or salt. So what's the bottom line? Just like we are complicated and interesting organisms, the food we eat is more than the grams of fat it contains, and so is our health. Nowadays, the top sources from which we in the United States get our saturated fat are cheese, pizza, and grain-based desserts, such as cookies and cakes. And the top source of calories? Those grain-based desserts! Fat may or may not be a source of our problems, but the foods we've been getting it from most definitely are.